Good morning, and uh, it's good to be with you again this morning to share uh, on these daily devotionals with Tabernacle Baptist in Newbridge. And uh, this morning we are continuing to look at the subject of prayer, and prayer particularly in the Sermon on the Mount. And when we are praying uh, in line with the Lord's Prayer or the Disciples' Prayer, as we've called it, we are covering the essentials of life, uh, both our practical and material life and our spiritual lives. Last time we dealt with, give us this day our daily bread. The next phase, phrase that we come to and we see in this uh, wonderful prayer is, forgive us our debts or our sins as we forgive those who are, who sin against us. Now, what does this mean? And why is it an essential matter for prayer for the individual disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, here we, we, we move away from our practical needs, our physical life, and we move into our spiritual life, into that spiritual uh, aspect of our lives. And this prayer really <clears throat> is a daily essential because it means that we can remain close to the Lord. So daily we are seeking his spiritual help because of the sin that we may have in our lives. We can we could say that, uh, and this is a this is a phrase that I can remember from when I was a, a child in, in, in church. I can remember uh, some men used to get up and they'd say, we need to keep a short account with God. Or uh, well, that means that we don't want to have sin constantly in our lives. Uh, but we need to be honest and open and to repent of that sin and to seek God's forgiveness. If you like, it's to keep a check on our moral standards and consider if we are living in line with how the Lord desires us to live. Or are we living in a, diff in a manner which is contrary to the way that God prescribes in his word? Now, the word debts is found in some translations. In other translations, it's the word sin. But that word debt actually re refers to moral debts or sins. Now, we have to remember this very important. We have been forgiven at the point of our salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ has dealt with our sin. It's been removed. It's been forgiven. And more importantly, if you like, it's been forgotten. He never remembers our sin. However, as we go through life, we do have issues which interfere with our regular communion with God. Uh, and these things need to be dealt with on a daily basis. Perhaps um, just simple things, thoughts, actions, uh, desires. And they get in the way and they mar and they spoil our spirit because they are sinful. See, we will never be perfect in this life. And we must be careful that we don't get to the point, though, where we accept sinful attitudes and actions in our lives and ignore the fact that those ways that we are living, those things that we are saying or things that we are doing, are actually demeaning to the Lord, who has called us out of darkness and into his light. And so that's why it's important that we seek a constant and daily forgiveness for our sin. Because the Lord is always the one who is offended by sin. And we can get to a point where we can accept it and we can almost turn a blind eye to it. And we can think nobody knows, nobody's interested. But we have to remember this, the Lord knows. The Lord sees our hearts. In fact, it says in the book of Acts, Lord, you who know the hearts of all men. And that's why we have to be honest with ourselves about the wrongdoing and about the sin that we have in our lives. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 12 to 13, Paul says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. See, Paul here reminds us that even though we have freedom from sin through the gospel, we can still allow our flesh or our human nature 
to have an impact on us which can lead to further sin. That is why we need to pray forgive us our sins for daily we may have wrong thoughts, desires and acts which are sinful. He says don't use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Now when he talks about the flesh he's talking about our old nature, our human nature, he's talking about uh, the impact of the world and the world standards on, on us. And so he says, don't allow the flesh to take control, to take over in your situation. But the wonderful thing is this, when we come to the Lord Jesus, we see that yes, we may make mistakes and yes, we may sin, we may fall, we may stumble along life's way. But there's a lovely verse and it's found in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. And John is writing here to a group of believers and he says, But if we sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So that means that when we do sin, we, have, we can go to the Lord Jesus Christ, the advocate, the one who pleads our cause, the one who can give us uh, forgiveness. And so that's a wonderful thing to know, isn't it, today, that even though sometimes we might get things wrong, uh, we can go to the Lord and seek his forgiveness. And he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Perhaps this is best illustrated in the story of King David. Uh, David and uh, got himself into a bit of a, a difficult situation with Bathsheba. And uh, his desires, his lustful desires for Bathsheba led to sin. And as a result of sin, the sin of adultery, uh, a child was born. And then it's recorded in Psalm, uh, Psalm 51, verses 6 to 12. We see here where David realises that there was sin in his life. He realised that all of that that he had uh, been through with Bathsheba was wrong. And what he did, he went to the Lord and he said, Lord, will you cleanse me? Will you purge me? Will you wash me? He said, well, basically, he's saying, will you forgive me? Forgive me of my sins. And he sought the Lord for purity of heart. He sought the Lord for his forgiveness and cleansing from all sin. And, you know, we, we know there that David is forgiven. And that's the wonderful thing that even though sometimes our sins can be so gross if you like the Lord can forgive he's willing and able to forgive us see there's no such thing as a small sin it's like people say it's just a white lie there isn't such a thing sin is sin lies is lies and in sin we have to remember this that it is the sin that God hates and that's why we have to be so careful about our life choices and our lifestyles in order that we do not sin against God. Because if we do that, we are harming the relationship that we have with our Saviour. So this prayer, this line in this prayer, is actually a prayer seeking after true holiness. Keep me holy, Lord. Get rid me of the sin which is affecting my life. Help me to live the way that you want me to live. Help me to live correctly uh, before you. And then we see the second part of this phrase, which has further implications to us. First of all, we have to deal with our own sin and we have to seek forgiveness. But then it says we should forgive others. Now, here is the problem. See, we are happy for God to forgive our sins, aren't we? But how prepared are we to forgive others? This is emphasised further on in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 14 and 15. Just a few verses on from our phrase. And it says this, For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So what he's doing here, the Lord is highlighting the necessity of personal forgiveness in respect to our prayers being heard. See, if we desire God's blessing and his forgiveness, then we also need to show Christian character and forgiveness to others. We cannot expect to receive anything from God 
First of all, if we're not in a right relationship with him, in other words, that we have those sins forgiven. But also that we are not in a right relationship with other people. That we forgive people who may have harmed and spoiled us. If your prayers are not being answered today, then how important it is that we examine our own hearts. Find out, discover, are you right with God? And are you right with other people? Because that can be such an important key to unlocking the blessing of answered prayer in our lives. You know, it can be difficult to admit that we're not perfect because everybody thinks that they are fine. It's very difficult as Christians to say that sin still causes us problems. But if we come to the Lord, recognise our faults and our failings, he will forgive us. And as a result of his forgiveness, we too can be a blessing to other people. And so today, as you pray, examine your own hearts. Where do you stand in relationship to God? Where do you stand in relationship to other people? Do you have sinful thoughts, actions, words and deeds? Then seek God and ask him, first of all, to forgive you, but also to help you cope, to fight against those situations to help us to be the people he would have us to be. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning and we realise that we are not perfect. We realise that sin still has an impact on our lives because of our human nature. And so we do seek your forgiveness today. We seek your forgiveness and your help. But also, Lord, help us to forgive others. And help us also to look and seek forgiveness from others if we have wronged them in any way. So we just commit ourselves to you today and ask, Lord, that you will be with us and help us. In the precious name of Jesus, we ask it. Amen.